Rubber Company presents another half hour of music and entertainment starring Jack Benny. The orchestra opens the program in the 6-8 temple with a medley of old favorites. in a hurry or fails to give good mileage it's due to the lack of knowledge on the part of the man who sold it. The general tire dealer saves his customers many dollars and a lot of worry because he is a factory trained expert. Attending these factory schools regularly they keep posted on the newest and latest tire developments. There is no guesswork in the general tire dealer's service. He knows the right tire to put on and the correct air pressure to carry. When you put this factory trained knowledge behind the tire of general high quality, you have a combination that means the longest, safest, and most economical mileage you can buy. And now for that phony comedian, or uh, funny comedian, Jack Benny. Thank you. Hello, some more. This is Jack Benny, your Hollywood reporter, coming to you with all the late news reports with the courtesy of the Hollywood close-up. Sees all, knows all, and brings out your defects. Let's go. Beverly Hills, California. The Bing Crosbys are proud parents of twins. They now have three boys and are the Marx Brothers worried. <laughs> hey, that's a good laugh to start with, isn't it? <laughs> the little Crosbys were born in the b -b -b blue of the night. And Bing was seen giving everybody a Karooner cigar. It's the best I can do with that. <laughs> Ocean Park, California. There's a rumor that Guy Kibbe was seen here going around with Joan Blondell. But don't worry, folks, it was a merry-go-round. They each had a different horse. Are you thrilled? Sam Goldwyn, California. Eddie Cantor, famous stage and screen comedian, gave a big dinner at his home last night. Who was there, Jack? Just I and the girls. That was enough. <laughs> there is no truth to the report that caviar was served at that dinner. It was just freckles on the waiter's hand. That's what fool us, huh? Who's this, California? What great screen star was seen on what night with what director, in whose car, and what did he say when she said, little man, what now? <laughs> P.S., who cares? Merry go round. The director claims he is so good he has a chance of stealing the picture. Hollywood, California. Frank Parker has as much chance of stealing the picture as Kate in second base. <laughs> Can I read one now, Jack? Yeah, Mary, everybody has to read one. Go ahead. Huh? Uh, Beverly Hills, California. There's a ru rumor that Gary Cooper, famous screen star, is that way about Mary Livingston. Is that the truth, Mary? No, but I hope he's just me in. Nice girl. Sure, sure, well, Don. Nice girl. Go ahead. Sure, sure. General Tire gave a blowout last night, and she is blowout proof, non skidding and has the patented low-pressure construction. Well, you can't stop that. You got one to read, Jimmy? Yeah. There is a rumor that Jimmy Greer and his orchestra will now play My Middle Name is Love. That's the truth, folks. Play Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jimmy Greer and the boys playing My Middle Name is Love. Swell guy, that Greer. You know, Jimmy and I were out together for the first time since I've been here in Hollywood, and we had a lot of fun. Last night, we, were, we went 50-50 on everything. I bought the dinner, he paid the car fare. I furnished the cigars, he had the matches. He took me to a show, I bought the tickets. He sure meets you halfway. Wait a guy. minute, Jack. Several times I reached for the check, and you just happened to beat me to it. Well, reach a little further next time, Jimmy. You know what I mean. Get your money out in two, four time instead of the old-fashioned wall, you know? But outside of that, you're a nice fella. Really, folks, Jimmy would give you his shirt. That is, if you were a Chinaman and didn't charge too much, you know? Say, Jimmy, we've been together now for eight weeks, and next Friday night is my last program from Hollywood, so I think you ought to say a few words to our audience. Come on, Jimmy, just a word or two, you know? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that in all the That's years... That's fine, I... Jimmy, and a great thought, too, believe me. Huh? I mean, how many leaders can talk like that? You know, folks, a lot of people have asked me in fan mail and in person what Jimmy Greer looks like, and I think it is only fair to describe him to you. Jimmy is tall, rather handsome, and when you first meet him, you don't like him at all. But after you're with him a while, he's no bargain either. You know? In appearance, I would say that Jimmy is the Cary Grant type. He looks more like General Grant. And speaking of General, it's the best tire on the market today. Oh, Jack, I read a great book last night, Shakespeare's King Lear. Hmm, isn't that book a little over your head, Mary? No, I hold it in my lap. Oh, all right. Answer the phone, Mary. You answer it. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Hey, do I go to work tonight? Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, our murder mystery. Your wife at home? I'll see. Oh, Minnie! <laughs> She's home. <laughs> well, come over right away, both of you, and go to work. I need you. Goodbye. And now, ladies and gentlemen, continuing with our mystery. The Stooge murder case, or who killed Mr. Stooge? Now, to you people who have been following this horrible mystery, I say hang on. But to you who have foolishly neglected it by attending to your business, I will describe what has gone on so far. Mr. J. Gafilto Stooge, of the famous Radio Stooges, was murdered on the night of June 15th in his villa on the Rue de La... which strangely reminds us of this mystery. <laughs> And the only clue are, are six shots found in a bottle in Mr. Stooge's hip pocket. And a jar of goldfish that won't talk. Say, Mary, have you any clues? No, just a run in my stocking. Now, what was the motive behind this murder? It was not homicide. It was not suicide. Maybe it was herpetide. Mary, go down by the seaside and pull a permanent wave over your head. Will you? <laughs> we will continue this mystery right after the next number, which will be sung by Philo Parker, the thin man. Play Officer Donovan. <laughs>
extra good tonight, Frank. It's your shoes, boy. That was Frank. That was Frank Pinkerton singing A Pretty Girl is Like a Melody, or Melody from the Zigfield Follies. And now for that battle of wits with the underworld. Which stew? Does crime pay? No, but cream does. It's 14 cents a bottle. <laughs> the scene takes place in Sergeant O'Hare's office in the 110th Precinct Police Station. Or maybe I was transferred by now. I don't know. Curtain. Play, Mr. G. <laughs> Donahue? Yes, Sarge. Where's Officer Clancy? Uh, the judge gave him 10 days for vagrancy. Well, get him out. After all, he's a policeman. Okay, give me the key. Fine, locking up our own people. No money in that. Uh, oh, Clancy. Yeah? You, you come out now, Toots. Thanks, Mary. Thanks. Hello, Sarge. Hmm, Clancy, what are we in for? Oh, nothing. I was walking my beat for two weeks and nothing happened, so I was arrested for loitering. Yeah, well, keep out of those neighborhoods. Matthew, we received thousands of letters from indignant taxpayers who are fervently looking for a conviction in the Stude murder case. What do you mean, fervently? I don't know. That's what's worrying me. <laughs> now, listen, Clancy, I want you to bring in every crook in town. Get going. Okay, Sarge. I'll need some help. All right. How many patrol wagons have we? Four. Take three and leave me one. I'm going out stepping tonight. <laughs> now, get going. Answer that, Miss Donahue. Hello. 110th Precinct Police Station. Yes. He did? What time did it happen? Mm. You don't say. Is he still there? What? No. All right. You bet I will. Goodbye. What was that? I don't know. I guess I had the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that next call, Miss Donahue. Hello. Hello, Sergeant O'Hare speaking. Who? O'Hare, O'Hare. I never do get that name. O'Hare, what is, what is it a bald-headed man hasn't got? Dandruff. <laughs> All right, then. This is Dan Druff talking. What do you want? A man was murdered here seven weeks ago. Now, what are you going to do about it? Don't be so impatient. We've been working our fingers to the bone. Oh, shooting craps, eh? <laughs> you little mind reader. <laughs> Listen, what are you going to do about this dead man? Well, as Hawkshaw once said, leave it to me. And as Shakespeare once said, shell fruit to be. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Why, this is an outrage. They can't do this to me. I'll call up the commissioner at once. I'll see the commissioner about this. Come on, come on now. Get inside. Get inside, all of you. What's this, Clancy? I cleaned up every free lunch counter, pool room, and park bench in town. They're all suspicious characters. It looks like the gang I've been trying to round up for weeks. Look at those faces. Which one of you is the leader? I am, and this is my orchestra. Yeah, what's your name? Scarface Greer. Hey, Ray. I think I'm bringing him in, Clancy. This is hard to Stephen. I don't know what we're going to do. It's cement case. It's cement to get Wait a minute. I've got a hunch. Nobody leave this room. Oh, Miss Donahue? Yes, Sarge. Get me Oxford, 3131. Okay. Operator, get me Gladstone, 9473. I asked for Oxford, 3131. Well, this is the best way to get it. <laughs> Hello? Here you are, babe. Hello? Hello, who is this? Police headquarters, Sergeant O'Hare speaking. Who? O'Hare, O'Hare. I'm not catching the name. Oh. Oh, hair, what have you got on your head? My brother, we're acrobats. <laughs> Wrong number. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Sarge. What is it, Clancy? What about this tough-looking egg over here? Maybe he knows something. He does look pretty suspicious of that. Where did you find him? Oh, hanging around the studio. Oh, yeah? Come here, you. What's your name? Bill Baker. Got your gang with you, eh? What do you know about this dude's murder case? Why, Jack, this is embarrassing. I was just sitting out front watching your program. Don't give me that stuff. What do you know about the dude's murder case? Nothing, and neither do you. <laughs> Where were you on the night of June 15th at 8 o'clock? In Chicago at the armor plant where you can buy the finest hams, the finest... Stop, Clancy, hams. stop! Why? Why? You can't mention armor here. Why not? There are more features to the general tire than any other tire on the market. It's the low pressure that makes generals blow out proof, and they can be purchased on convenient terms for the general tire dealer. I guess we're even, Baker. Not yet. I came up here to get that ten bucks you borrowed from me at the Davis Theater in Pittsburgh. Don't evade the issue. Why did you kill Mr. Sue? Don't evade the ten bucks. Why didn't you write when you promised to? <laughs> Nick, Bill, you're trapped in the mystery. What mystery? I want my ten bucks. He'll give it to you next week, Bill. He just paid off Freddie Allen. <laughs> Quiet, Miss Donahue. Clancy, who's that other egg over there? No, he came in with Baker. Yeah, come here, you. What's your name? 
My name is Bottle, sir. Bottle, eh? Your name is Bottle. What's your first name? Nicholas Murray. Nicholas Murray Bottle, I see. You know who I am, don't you? Oh, yes, yes. Jack Wynn, the tire chief. <laughs> hey, Bottle, why didn't you save that one for our program? Quiet, sir. I'm not working for you now. Attaboy, Bottle. Now, wait a minute, you. My name is O'Hare. Sergeant O'Hare. Glad to know you, Sergeant. Uh, what's that name, sir? O'Hare, O'Hare. What have you got in your head? Uh, liquid Vaseline. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have trouble with you, too. <laughs> ah, what is it? What are you laughing at, Bottle? What is it? It was funny when that gentleman over there said dandruff. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, you two. I've had enough of this. My name is O'Hare. Get off the O'Hare. <laughs> Who was that? That's Beetle, Jack. Oh, Beetle, eh? Oh, we're haunted here, too. Now, listen, Beetle. Do you know who killed Mr. Stooge? Yes, yeah, I do. Who did it? Mr. Stooge was killed by Operator 13 in the shadow of the... <laughs> <laughs> This hooey will be continued next Friday night. So try and solve this mystery. Your guess is as good as ours. Play Beetle, Bottle, or Jimmy. Stick around, Phil. We'll have some fun later on the program. You haven't got another bottle with you, have you? Huh? Got another bottle? Huh? Oh, play, Jimmy. All right, play, then. were twins, played by Jimmy Greer and his orchestra. Well, what do we do now, Phil? You know, you can't leave me flat now that you've butted in here. I don't care, Jack. <laughs> it's great to see you again and talk over old times. Sure is. Remember the fun we had a few years ago in Kansas City when I was there playing the Orpheum Theater and, and you were laying off? Yeah. <laughs> you remember in Chicago when it was vice versa? <laughs> what vice versa? That was the palace. That's right. But, Phil, will you ever forget that theater we played together in St. Paul? We were on the same bill together. Oh, sure. Yeah. Remember my name was in lights and you were kicking to the manager? Yep, your name was in lights, all right. Yes, sir. And, Jack, do you remember after your second joke, your name came down and they put <laughs> Mickey Mouse up? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Hey, what's Mickey Mouse doing now, Phil? Oh, he's making another comedy picture. See, that's funny. Here we are, the three of us in Hollywood, making pictures. Yep, huh? Mickey Mouse and the two rats. <laughs> Say, Jack, you used to play pretty good fiddle in those days. Are you still playing it? You mean violin. Well, and it was fiddle in those days. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, I still play it occasionally. Do you still use your accordion? Oh, once in a while. I bet the audience can't guess what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Say, Phil. What? How about you and me playing a little violin and accordion number? You know, for old times' sake. Sure, right? I'll be glad to. Told you, Bottle. Oh, sure. They've been rehearsing it all week. What do we play? I don't know. I generally have some in the audience. Any number you folks would like to hear. Any number at all. 
Humorous. Okay. Doesn't, doesn't make any difference what you call. Humorous. Is that it, Phil? Yeah. Uh, how does it, how does that go? Humorous. Humorous. Uh, yeah. uh, wait a minute. Now. Uh, uh, love. Uh, the, what do they want? Humorous or love thy neighbor? Huh? Hey, love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Um, how, does it, how does it go? Let's play. Uh, uh, how does it go? Love thy neighbor. Love thy Never neighbor. Never mind the script. How love thy neighbor? Go. Um, da dum da dum da dum. Oh, love thy neighbor. Oh, sure. Let's play love thy neighbor. Well, give me A on there. Just call A. Good, near enough. <laughs> All right, uh, humorous. Humorous. Ready? Surprise. You are. Armor's ham, it is the best. And General Tire beats the rest. Uh, da, da, de, uh, Love thy neighbor. That's so loud, they can't hear me. I told you to take up the cornet. Hot, Jack. Don't you think it's awfully nice when you have a piece of ice? That was uh, Phil Baker and Jack Benny playing Hugh Moret. And Hugh Moret, anybody about the general blowout-proof tire, and you will find, you will find that... Play, Jimmy, play. <laughs> play. In every field, it's the specialist who is best qualified to serve the public. The general tire dealer in your community is a factory-trained tire expert. He owns his own business, and his first concern is to see that you get the most for your tire dollar. If you've never done business with him, why not stop in his store tomorrow? Let him show you how important proper tire equipment is to your safety and comfort. He can tell you why one tire can wear out in half the time of others. He can show you how easy it is to correct many things that cause irregular wear, driving fatigue, shimmy, and unexpected blowout. The general tire dealer is a real tire specialist. He can save you many dollars and assure you greater tire safety because of his factory trained knowledge. If you want greater safety, greater economy, and greater mileage, the general tire dealer is the man to go to.
Uh, this is the last number of the 16th program in the General Tire Series. Be sure and listen in next Friday night and find out who killed Mr. Stoops. Come on, Mary, I'll take you home now. Sorry, Jack, I'm going home with Bottle. Where's Beetle? He went up the country for the weekend to make noises. Oh, good night, folks. <laughs> The General Tire program starring Jack Benny has come to you from the NBC studios in Hollywood, California. The tune Shine on Your Shoes is from the production Flying Colors. Don Wilson speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company.